Thank you, brother. <clears throat> Called, chosen, and faithful. Well, that's... These are three good things. These are None of these things can be um, spoken of those who are in the flesh. Those who... Um, See, the, the, these, things, these things are called out of the flesh and into the spirit. Now, this, this, Brother Jonathan mentioned this text right towards the end in 2 Peter 1.10. And um, this is why I like to focus on this for the exhortation. Because he talked about um, those who were called, those who were chosen, those who were faithful. See, this is the, but from the judgment standpoint, you look back and you can say, you, you, these are kind of the things you can say. These were the called. You see, they were the, the appointed ones. These were the chosen, the elect of God. See, and, and then these were the faithful ones. You see, that's from the judgment looking back. It looks a little bit different from right here where you're at now. They all may very well may be true. But see, Peter, in the second uh, epistle of Peter here, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, he gives it from a different vantage point, from a different perspective. It's just talking about the same thing. And yet, see, from our perspective, we're called to enter in, to, to, to be involved, to take hold. He says it like this. I'll start at verse 9. But he that lacketh these things, he just listed a, a, a bunch of things here. You know, add to your faith, virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance. He, he, he gives you something to work with now. You're in, you're in this in, 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 the enemy's environment. You're in this environment of the devil. You've been made new. You've, you're, you're one of God's elect. What are you going to do with that? Well, that's what he says. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. So there's a condition that a person can be in that started out good where it's not real good. So he says this, wherefore the rather. Now this is what we really ought to be giving ourselves to. Those that are in Christ, those that are chosen, those that are called, those that are God's elect, those that are faithful, what, what are they about doing? Make your calling and election sure. This is our business right now. This is, what you're, this is your business. Now, God, you couldn't elect yourself. There wasn't anything you could do that, that, would, that would make you appealing to God in the sense, I'm talking about in the sense of election. Now, God had to choose before the foundation of the world now. Now, something, I got a... I got a uh, come to the conclusion that something that was decided before the foundation of the world really is out of my control. I, I really can't claim any kind of personal involvement in that, in that choice. Can anybody? I don't think they can. Before the foundation, you are chosen in Christ. Okay, now, but now, right here is where the rubber meets the road. What do you make? You can make your calling an election sure. Now, are you making it sure to God? Well, see, that's you're making it sure to you. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're taking, you're apprehending, you're, you're getting a hold of salvation. Now we all know that, that when this occurs, when this, you are the, the happiest, you could be locked up in a prison, but if you're making your call and election sure, if you know that you're saved, there isn't anything on earth that can compare with that. There isn't any, any, kind, of, any kind of pleasure that Satan can offer you that can trump when you know you're of God. Amen. See, this is a, um, God, all, we know that God always does things or works according to his eternal purpose. See, he hasn't done anything independent from his eternal purpose from the time he started making the world all the way up to the time when he, everyone stands before him. Everything that God's done has been in light of this eternal purpose. Now, see, now, when you get on board, as it were, when you start aligning yourself with that eternal purpose and you start seeing, hey, I, I can see the, I can see that I'm one of God's elect. I can see that. What do you do? You start distancing yourself from anything that's contrary to it. And what is that? It's making your calling and election sure. There's some things you've got to cast off. The works of darkness, you've got to cast them off. And you've got to put on some things, this armor of light. Well, what are you doing? You're making your calling and election sure. And he says something here that I've run into some people who just couldn't receive this, but this is good. It says, if... You do these things, you shall never fall. Now, I've had people tell me, well, that's, that, I don't believe that. Of course, then I had to tell them this is in the Bible. This is in the Bible here. Now, in other words, if you, if you walk in the Spirit, 
You'll, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I have to conclude then that if I sin, I didn't walk in the spirit, I didn't make my calling and election sure. You see all the things that I had to set aside in order to sin. So see that all these things are calling God's elect, God's chosen, you know, the ones that will be found faithful. He's calling them into this air arena where they become participants in salvation. This is, this is actually, this is all because, all of this is because you're with him. I like that. I like that perspective. There are some who are with Jesus and they will not leave his side. They won't. It reminds me of, remember Elijah and Elisha? Elisha, he wouldn't leave his side. He wouldn't. He said, go on over there and do, do this errand. Nope, I'm staying right here. Well, see, the, these that are making their calling election sure, they've seen the value of being with Jesus. That's right. And this, this is going to pay off on the day of judgment. Yeah. It's going to pay off. These are with me. These are worthy. These are worthy. Yes, these are worthy. They shall walk with me in white because they're worthy. Wow. Well, see, if you can see it rightly, being with Jesus, that's a high calling. A high call, and you get to be with Jesus. And in Revelation 12, 11, I'll just summarize it here. This is, this is like the, the bottom line. Talk about walking with Jesus, talking about being called, talk about being the, I'm one of his elect, all right? So what's, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. We do have a lot of things to overcome. There's a lot of things that you're going to have to overcome between now and the time that you, you, you check in, as it were, you cast off this robe and you, you check in. All right, I'm here now. All right? They overcame him. I'm talking about the devil now. All the principalities and powers that are against you. There's a lot against you. But they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That doesn't sound like I had anything to do with that now. It was the blood of the lamb. That, 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 that's why. And by the word of their testimony, you see how you're involved in it now. This has become a part of you. And the, the very fact you can say, I know my sins are gone. My sins have been taken away by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Unto the death. You know, when, at the point in time, everyone makes these intersections quite a bit that are in Christ. At the point that the road or whatever direction you're in says, you got to leave Christ to go this way. You say, no. I won't, I won't leave Christ even if it costs me, even if I have to die to myself. Remember Paul said, I die daily. Every day I'm confronted with a circumstance, a situation to where I have to decide, am I staying with Christ or am I going over here? And you say, no, I'll cut off my own eye if, if it offends me. I'll do it. Why? Because you've seen the value of being with Christ. And this is the exhortation. Is that, you see, this, this whole thing, this is all being orchestrated by God. Brother Jonathan brought that out. It's all being orchestrated by God. Guess it's God's choice. These are, these are God's decisions. And yet he empowers men. You see how gracious God is? He's brought us into salvation and made us a part of it. It's, salvation is a part of you. So much you can say, I, I die. I'm not, see, I'm not choosing my own will. I'm choosing the will of another. Well, now, that, let me tell you, that's not going to be something you can do on your own power. You're going to have to get grace. Remember, we have a throne of grace. You come to the throne of grace to obtain help. What, to do what? To do this. To make your calling and election sure. Because if you do these things, you'll never fall. You know, I, I can remember the, the moment it hit me. I don't have to sin anymore. That's a powerful consideration. Amen. I don't have to. I can honor God in everything. If I'm working, whatever I'm doing, I can honor God. I can do it heartily as unto the Lord. And that, well, that frees you up. You're, you're free from the flesh. Then I don't have to serve you anymore. In fact, you have to serve me. Well, anyway, I, I appreciated this, Brother Jonathan. And I like this perspective. If, uh, I like God's view of these things. Amen. It's very profitable. i open it up now for any comments. Sister Maddie? Brother Jonathan, um, 